I just grabbed this camera because I want to share with you what was happening and why we have a problem right now. And first of all, before we do that, look at this clip here. I was just trying to do an intro to this video and all of a sudden something just knocks my camera down. I don't know what it was, what kind of energy. Could it be a ghost? Could it just have been anything? I don't know, but $2,000 camera crashes to the floor. Now it's useless because the lens in the front can no longer hold a lens filter. But this is what happened. And the reason why I'm standing by this door is because of what is going on. All right, so that just created a whole other problem. In addition to the problem I'm about ready to share with you here, and I'm gonna actually walk around this house and share with you what the problem is, because this has been something that's been ongoing in the recent weeks, and I, I feel like it's just becoming more of a problem, and you're about to see what I mean. I'm gonna just show you, just gonna walk around the house and show you what I'm talking about. First, we'll start here. I mean, as you notice, the tree is still up, which is a good thing, right? Hasn't hasn't fallen down, hasn't flown into the window, none of that. I mean, you, you saw that like a video one time where that happened, right? Well, still there, which is good, but let's get to the point here. All right, so we walk into here. All right, this area here is, is known for being one of the most active parts of this house when it comes to the paranormal, when it comes to ghosts haunting this house. This area has been has been full of activity a whole lot of activity in here and i'm believing that it's the source is there it's that is that charger for the tesla and the char the tesla itself has a lot of power in it because it's got batteries so in this room this has been a source of a lot of activity which has been captured on that camera right there the nest security camera which has been shared on YouTube numerous times around the summertime and activities got so intense where this car was lifting off the ground, things were flying everywhere, things fell into the car, uh, just electronics malfunctioning, things moving around, tractor moving, drawers moving in and out in there by themselves, just things happening in here, things flying everywhere, you name it, it was happening in here, water bottles just exploding with water just bubbling out out of nowhere like and things just glowing, haunted dolls flying around everywhere, just moving by themselves. All these kinds of things were happening and it started in here. It's like this was the core of everything. And I'm gonna address the issue that I'm having right now. I'm gonna take you downstairs and then once I get down there, I'm gonna show you what's happening down there. Then we're gonna, then I'll explain what's, what, the, what the big problem is. And uh, as you notice, that drawer hasn't moved well. As I noticed in the last couple of days, it just it hasn't even done anything. It's been like that. It moved open, I think three three days ago or something, and it hasn't moved since. And I left it alone. I didn't even touch it. I just wanted to see what, if it was going to do anything. And down here, as we walk down these stairs, as you know, that room there has been known for a lot of activity. It's been another big source of energy that's been feeding whatever has been haunting my house to the, to the point where it has definitely got a lot of attention when I shared it on YouTube. And the power source is right here. It feeds into the Tesla charger, which is that wire that goes all the way to the garage. <clears throat> this has been a high energy source in here. And it's, it's cleaned up. I'm cleaning it up. There's a lot of stuff in here from the old house. So I feel that there's been some attachments to these items in here that could have been the cause of a lot of what's been happening. And me just introducing other things into the home that had some things attached to it only just amplified the problems that were already happening here with the hauntings in this house. And when I say problems, I mean there was big problems. It, I was losing sleep. I, you know, it was getting so stressful. You know, I didn't couldn't tell the difference between if it was a ghost that was doing something or if someone trying to break in the house. And this has been ongoing since the summer. And I feel like uh, it all started after I started visiting my friend Omar and coming back and forth. And it all started with that box in the, in the toolbox. And then from there, I ended up taking on a Hornet doll and things got crazy. But let me go into the gym room. And that's going to be where we get into the details about the problem. The big problem that we're... That, that I have right here that's uh, it's a big issue. So we're gonna get into this gym room because like I said, this is another place that has a lot of energy. It's in here. This right here. 
my area where I work out, where I stay healthy, where I stay in shape, where I get my sun in the winter, I, I get my running on a treadmill, and I, I'm punching the speed bag and doing all kinds of stuff, okay? Just keep it in shape. I decided to up my game, and I'm doing this a lot more now. I mean, three times as much, and I'm in here, and I feel there's a motivation for that, and I'm going to get into that, but right now, nothing has been moving in here. This has been sitting still, none of that. No, no, this hasn't been moving. The, the treadmill hasn't come on and done things by itself. This hasn't fallen and didn't fall over anything. It's been quiet in here. It has been quiet throughout the house other than just the sounds of us being here. So I feel that whatever has been tormenting this house, whatever has been here haunting this house to the extreme that it has, I've gotten rid of that problem before my daughter moved back in by burying those dolls once and for all after how many times that I, it was a failed attempt and you know, just going back and forth, digging them back up here, putting them here and there. There were some decisions I made. I was even on the phone with a priest and, and trying to cleanse the house and, and doing a lot of other things to help keep it calm. And uh, reading the scripture at the, from the Bible around the house, I did so many things, okay? And doing all that had created a big problem, and I'm going to get to that right now, because you're probably like, what is this big problem? You keep saying you're going to get into it, but I'm going to get into it. That it only makes sense after I had gotten to this point and gotten in this room, because I feel like this room has a lot to do with everything, because I'm feeling this motivation, this positive energy. I'm feeling a positive spirit in this room, a very positive spirit, to the point where I have been so motivated to work out that I'm working out three times as much. And now I have these like goals of mine and I, I don't want to just get so I don't know ripped I, I want to bulk up I just want to be as strong as I can for my age you know and I felt like I had limitations because I was thinking oh at this age I, I'm not not going to be able to to really bulk up because you know you start to lose that as you get older and then I had a reality check it's almost like a spirit had told me that you're I'm not too old it's like you're not too old Rowan you can do this you can make it happen you can be like you were in your 20s, that you can be stronger and faster and, and get bulked up as much as you want. As long as you put that effort into it, you can do it. And I was inspired by that thought. Then I started going on YouTube looking at people my age working out. And I saw people in their 60s and 70s that were just built like tanks. I'm like, wow, I am not too old for this. I can do this. After seeing that, people that are 20 years old than me that look like Popeye, you know, really tough. Even Arnold Schwarzenegger for his age, like, holy shit, look at him. And he's in his 70s. I'm like, damn. He says, what, why was I holding myself back by only just, you know, I was working out, but I wasn't taking it to the level that I was taking it to where I was just like putting as much effort and as much weights. And now I feel like there's no limitation. I could just go all for it and it's on. And I'm, and I'm, I've started this and this is like my New Year's resolution i'm already acting on it now so i'm going to be working hard and, and bulking up and getting back to the way i was in my 20s i know people are going to start saying are you doing steroids but you know what i take it as a compliment because when i say no and i tell them what i've done the hard work and dedication to eating healthy and having the right foods is what's going to be the thing that shows and you know people are already like uh, you know people already talk about that now and i'm not even really i don't know what you call it i haven't blown up yet like you know what i mean muscle wise i mean I'm at some level, I guess I'm at a certain point of bulking myself up, but I am taking this to another level. And I know I'm getting a little off topic, so let me get back into that. But I just wanted to bring that up because that was a positive vibe I was getting from in this room of all the places where there was, there, there was so much negative energy in here that it was pushing me to not come in here and work out. That I would basically grab my weights and go outside with them because I didn't want to be in here. It was stressing me out. And the stress was making me do things that I didn't want to do by pushing myself too hard where I was going to end up, end up injuring myself. Because there's a, there's a balance. There's a balance. And I, I was doing that out of anger. And I'm going to do this out of a positive feeling so that I can do it the right way and not get injuries. Anyway. The thing is, the big problem we have here is that we have positive energy in here. And this positive energy, I know you're just like, why, was, why is that a big problem? Why is having positive energy a big problem? It is when it comes to this whole YouTube thing. Because I've been sharing so many things in my house with all of you. And as much as I really enjoy this positive energy in here, there's nothing going on in here that I can bring to you as entertainment or as something that would intrigue you. Because right now, things are very subtle, okay? Whatever is happening, it's almost impossible to tell the difference between this very positive spirit and someone just being in the house. Since my daughter had moved back in and now things have calmed down to the point where 
I won't know. I just don't know the difference between a sound that could be from my daughter walking around or what have you, or something that's a spirit. So when it comes to sharing that on YouTube, it's really not going to be intriguing because in your mind, now that you know my daughter had moved back in, that if you hear something, you're going to default to thinking it's got to be her, maybe in the kitchen or walking around the house or she's got to be opening the door or this or that or whatever it may be you know it's gonna just default to it's got to be somebody because we we just we kind of get skeptic in a way if there's someone else in the house when it comes to little things but if it's something really intense and there's someone in the house and you see that happening while they're standing right there and it's happening while we're both there and it's like wow it can't be either one of us and it's quite obvious that it's another force then it's undeniable and then when something is undeniable to that extent then it's very intriguing when it comes to youtube and i notice it's very really hard to please people on youtube and the only people that are really going to stick around are those who are invested in me as a person just like you and there's a lot of you out there that that come here for me it doesn't matter what's happening in my life but i feel like my youtube channel has fallen apart about 45 days ago maybe because things started to become repetitive because it was like the same kind of situation that i was sharing but maybe in a different flavor of it but it was still in the same thing and i think it got old fast and and i don't know i just felt like there was this negative energy in in the people who were watching the content like some kind of people had a change of heart about something it's like something turned them away and and i think it goes deeper than just repetitive content i feel like it went deeper than that i feel like that something or someone is responsible for what happened and is it me is it my fault i was like i'm trying to figure out whose fault it is i it's like i don't want to blame anybody but is it the fault of the youtube algorithm is it the fault of me for being repetitive that that i rub off people the wrong way with my f-bombing and it just got to the point where people got tired of that i just i wish i had the answer and i just don't know the answer i don't know what i've done wrong i wish i had the answer to that so that i can fix that problem but i feel like it's too late now because things aren't happening like they were so it's not like i can go back in time and change things and say okay maybe i should have be, been careful with my f-bombs and i should have been careful about what i said i don't know then i would be in the comments kind of supporting what's going on and i think i was feeding into the negative energy and the skeptics that i know there are skeptics that may not believe in things and i you know they're entitled to their opinion but i felt like some of them were just taking their opinions to a point where it wasn't a, an opinion anymore and it was more like hurtful and it was more like just trying to make someone else feel bad and i didn't like that and i felt like at that time in my life before my daughter moved in, I was becoming so lonely and sad, and I felt like those little things hurt me at that time. And right now, what I'm scared of, I'm not scared of ghosts, I'm not scared of people, people don't bother me, but I'm scared of losing something good. I'm scared of losing something that was amazing. And it, it's still amazing, but I feel like it's falling apart, and it's this channel, it's the whole YouTube thing. I've been with YouTube since 2007. It's a big part of my life, you know. I, I tried to fit it in when it comes to, you know, everything else going on in my life, you know. I always have prioritized family time, education, uh, my business, you know. YouTube was was always a hobby, and, it, you know, I couldn't let it interfere with, with family time or work or anything. So all those years, I managed to find some time for YouTube and everybody has kind of grown with me and a lot of you have followed me over the years and you're now here and the reason why you're still here right now is because you're invested in me as a person so you're, you're surviving all this yapping that I'm doing you're, you're still here watching you've made it this far because you're invested in me I just feel like there's becoming a disconnect because I feel like sometimes YouTube does this to people like you get so you get so far with YouTube and then they, they pull you back and they, they make you irrelevant at some point, you know, like where you had that run and then it's no longer viable. It's kind of like you're, you're, you're irrelevant. You're no longer trending or view worthy. And I feel like YouTube has so much control that, you know, they can just break a channel easily. You know, if there's not enough engagement, they could just, the channel can fall apart. People not smashing the like button, channel can fall apart. Um, people not sharing or commenting, channel just boom, it falls apart. And when people, I don't know, when people spread negativity, I feel like sometimes it really hurts the channel because people may change their opinions about the content and then they just don't want to watch anymore. Or maybe they don't like how I react to a lot of the negativity and then they don't watch because of how I react. But I'm only human and sometimes it just gets hurtful and I'm much stronger now than I was when I was alone. So. 
I don't let the hate bother me like I did when I was vo more vulnerable emotionally. But it still, it was stressing me out because I felt like that hate was just hurting my channel. And I didn't want that to be taken away because I got so used to YouTube being a companion for me. It was like during my loneliest times, all of you were there for me through this platform. And it really has been a meaningful thing for me. And I, I'm so thankful for you being here. And I feel like that something is trying to separate us and it's causing this separation anxiety is causing this sadness I'm, I'm feeling like we're losing touch and and it's some, for some of you it may be that you're losing touch with me that you just I'm no longer interesting because I don't have all these extreme hauntings to share on this channel and and that's what you came for based on that being the most popular thing that was happening at the time I was like that was what I was uploading because that was the most that was consuming me it was just happening so much and there wasn't time for anything else to post so everybody got kind of got stuck into that okay expectation of paranormal even though the channel has been about everything not just paranormal and um, I feel like I'm losing a lot of people because things have changed like this this house is not extremely haunted like it has been it's quiet and now that it's quiet I feel like people aren't interested anymore they're not interested in something that's quiet because they wanted to see a lot of action and when things started to get more subtle and just less intense I noticed the, that people started disappearing the views went down the ratings went down I felt like there was more negativity that was getting mixed in with the positivity I felt like it was the balance was getting off I noticed my ratings went from like 99 percent positive to like down to 96 percent positive to down like 95 so it's like it's spiraling downwards and I don't understand what's happening so I'm feeling less love now than I was about maybe two months ago I feel like something's changed and I may I don't know if there's a wall that YouTube's putting up between you and I and and you're just totally as clueless as I am about it don't understand what's happening you're maybe you're not getting notified and that's why there's no connection the only thing I can suggest is turn on your notification and just come back to the channel and check to see if I've uploaded anything that's the only way it's gonna work so this is the big problem in this house as much as I'm happy that I'm not dealing with the ghost especially now that my daughter's back so I don't have to worry about her dealing with all this and us just going through that I'm just sad for the YouTube side so it's a big problem when it comes to giving you the content that you really like to watch delivering that sharing that stuff that's where the problem lies so we have a big problem and that is us all enjoying this content together in the premieres where we engage and interact that's the big problem that we have right now it's it's the entertainment value that's diminished because of the lack of activity that I can share and I decided to just kind of experiment and mess with this Randonautica app and then maybe that was not the best idea because I'm not trying to draw the wrong kind of attention. One of the things that I always thought about was drawing the wrong kind of attention and this was something that kind of started to hit my mind more in a recent month or so. So my mind was like, okay, if anything extreme happens, I don't want to draw attention to it based on the kind of reactions I was getting and the comments I was getting where people were sending threats to come here and ghost hunt and break in and there was just so many things where I got so stressed and then I was like stocking up on ammo and just you know just going all rambo and terminator style or whatever you know i was just getting that way a hobby shouldn't be like this youtube should be fun not stressful it shouldn't you shouldn't be stressed about your safety or the safety of your family and so that's what it's come to and so even if something were intense going on in here i'd kind of be hesitant to share it but maybe with members only because i feel like if i share it with members only i'm not sharing it to the open wild youtube because there's a wild side and it's like the creeps in the dark shadows the ones that have bad intentions and i know they're not going to cross over to the number side right because then they're not going to be anonymous anymore at that point because you can't be you cannot be anonymous to be a member you have to there's a certain you know you got to give them financial information right to, and it, YouTube has that I have nothing to do with that that's all that YouTube gets that stuff but I'm just saying that's how that goes so I just wish there was a way to filter out the negative stuff but right now I I'm not letting it bother me but I just don't want to draw the wrong kind of attention but right now even if I, I can't even draw the wrong kind of attention if I try because nothing's happening in here it's just very quiet and you cannot tell the difference between my daughter walking around or or a ghost because that's how subtle it is so that's my dilemma I'm actually gonna go out here because I know that um when I was looking at the poll, one of the things that was in the poll was like me being outside was like that was a highly voted option. Me walking around, exploring, talking, 
doing things, you know, going places. So I'm going to be outside just for the duration, just because I feel like maybe that's what I need to do. Here I am outside, and I just want to say I'm going to try what I can to make this work. That's why I have a poll right now. So if you can, check out that poll. I'm going to have a, a link to it in this video, in the description and annotations. Check it out. I'm reaching out to, to ask you, what do you think would work? Like, what, what do you want to watch? Like, what kind of content do you want me to share on this channel? Because... I'm inspired by a good friend of mine and, and I need that motivation and incentive and all of you are my incentive. The the, uh, the positive engagements, just you being happy watching my content, that's the incentive, that's the motivation. So seeing you happy watching the content that I create is the most important part of this whole thing. And as long as I'm happy as well, I don't want to be miserable, you know, we got to have a balance. But I feel as long as you're happy with what I'm putting out there and it's a positive experience and it helps my channel grow. I'm I mean that's what that's what I really want I just want that to happen so we've got to figure it out because I feel like I'm limited I I don't know how I can entertain anyone if I'm just if it's just one person it's just me I don't know how to do that I mean other, other than becoming different characters and doing skits you know, if I do like a scary skit or a comedy skit I mean I, I can get into those things if that's what it needs to be done to entertain but everyone came for one thing and that's my haunted house and I can't control that I mean it's just quiet right now I've, I've gotten rid of a lot of the negative energy in here so there's nothing here that's causing all these crazy things to happen and without that it's nothing to share plus now i'm just a little hesitant to share anything crazy because of the tension it draws but i want to take these kind of adventures on the road but it's kind of hard to do that because it requires traveling and i don't have the finances to just go up and you know just hit the road and travel plus right now it's kind of hard with the restrictions because of the pandemic and i know there's people out there that make youtube videos and they have a good source of income from it and that's like maybe one of their biggest sources of income and they might have side jobs and so they travel and it's part of youtube content creation and so their youtube career i guess pays for the traveling but for me youtube's a hobby it's you know yeah there is a little side income but it's very negligible it's not enough i mean it barely pays for the internet itself and some memory cards and just things that are YouTube related, you know, just to put back into it, but not enough to the finance accommodations and traveling and not and not nowhere is near enough for that so i can't just get up and hit the road and travel uh for youtube the only way i can travel is for business if i'm doing it for my job if i'm doing it for a web designing project or working with a client it's the only way i can do it and if those things do happen then i can bring my camera and incorporate that like okay so i got a, i got a contract i got to go to uh, south carolina or here and so while i'm out there you know during that contract when i'm when it's my downtime and it's just my personal time that I can grab the camera and maybe explore around the, at whatever area that I'm needed. So that's the only time that I, I was ever able to do that. And this this I've done before. It's usually when I have a reason to be there. And like when I'm going to Florida, it's been business. It's been it's been to look for a home. It's been working with a company. You know, it's just it's different things. And then hanging out with my friend Omar. So there was different things that were happening. But it's all because it was business related and home searching related. <sighs> I just wish that it was viable. You know, I wish that YouTube was able to be able to bring in enough to finance these road trips. But I made big mistakes by my potty mouth, my F-bombs. How many F-bombs have I dropped in videos? Like 20, 30 in each one? That really backfired. <laughs> it really did. Um, F-bombs don't bring you any revenue. But it's never been about revenue. It's been about just entertaining you and, and having a sense of companionship. And, you know, entertainment comes from many di different things. Reality, the things that happen in my life, having a real haunted house that brings some kind of entertainment to you it brings a, it's an interest because you wouldn't watch if you weren't interested or entertained by whatever's happening <sighs> and i know i can create something and and maybe do a comedy skit or do a commentary about a trending topic or a com or health or maybe just anything i feel like i could do something and contribute it to youtube but i just don't know how to go about it when it's just me you know, like if I grab a camera and I'm just, whether I'm in the house or I'm out and about somewhere, what's it going to be? I'm going to have to talk, right? It's going to be yapping, right? Like, that's what I don't understand. How's that going to work out? Like, so I have a camera. What happens? I don't have anyone else that's in my videos, so there's no one for me to, like, kind of interact with. It's just me. So how do I bring that to YouTube and keep it entertaining and intriguing? I mean, when I've been sharing the haunted stuff here, and it got to the point where it got intense. Yeah, that in itself would be intriguing and bring some entertainment value, but how do I do that if it's just me and nothing's happening? I mean, if I'm going places, how does that work out?
Any suggestions? I, I know if I do live streams, it's just yapping and yapping. What are we going to do? Live streams where I'm talking to spirits and, and barely getting anything? Or we just hear a spirit box app talking back and how entertaining is that? I mean, that's not intriguing. I mean, maybe if, you know, weights go flying and knock me on the head and I get knocked out, maybe that's entertaining. But if you're, all you're doing is hearing the spirits like talking through the through the app i mean who it gets kind of boring after a while doesn't it so that's the, that's the dilemma and i know it's like taking how many minutes to, to talk about this i could have just spit it out in five minutes and here's dragged down sometimes it takes me too long to get a five five minutes worth of information out it may take me 20 minutes so and most of it's probably me forgetting what i said and then repeating myself in the near future maybe even this poll that i have now where everybody may vote on one of the things that may be the hardest to do in reality because of the pandemic and everything else that's going on because that may be the only one that's the most interesting and i'm not afraid to work hard at things but i also have to run my business but i did throw other options out there because it can be doable but those particular options may not be doable as often as the other options so it's a matter of which one is chosen because some may be easier to do more often and some there may be a lot of time in between but i'm going to try to mix it up because like i said this channel is not about paranormal it's about everything it's it's about reality and, and skits and pranks and haunted places and cars and, and stuff like that but i i don't know i feel like i kind of got away from the car thing because nobody really wants to see cars and plus i want to be as humble as i can and i feel like putting cars out there sometimes it rubs people the wrong way because some people might not even have a car or have a car of that kind and i don't want to be that person that's kind of rubbing in anybody's noses like oh look what i have i don't want to do that look i wear tank tops wherever i go i don't go dressing up i don't dress up fancy for anything i wore i got a jacket because hey it's it's not about being fancy i mean it's more like a to me, it looks like a biker jacket or a Terminator jacket. It doesn't look like any kind of fancy, really classy kind of jacket you wear when you're trying to, uh, you know, show you have money or anything. Because the last thing I want to do is show that. You know, I worked hard to be where I am. And I'm struggling, even though I've been successful, because we all go through struggles, right? And the pandemic has really killed my business. And I'm living off of savings, really. And my retirement is my savings. So I'm living off my retirement. I had to take money out of that. And the whole bottom line is, I don't go around dressing up fancy. I wear tank top and shorts all the time. A lot of times I rewash the same one so it looks like I never even changed because you know what? I like a certain look. I like a certain, it's, I get comfortable with a certain shirt and I'm not out there to impress anybody. I'm not out there to look like, you know, I'm a fancy dresser. I just dress comfortably and that's just the way that is. I don't need to dress up. You know, it's not like I'm working for anybody that I have to wear certain kind of clothes. But I may, you know, wear something nice if I'm going to, a, you know, someone's wedding or church event or family gathering or something that's special where you, you need to wear more than a tank top. Other than that, I just wear a tank top everywhere. And right now, there's really no gatherings anyway. So kind of just isolating here, really. Kind of no choice. If I'm going to travel anywhere, it's going to be on my two feet. And uh, maybe in the car, drive somewhere in the middle of nowhere, then get out and walk. That's the extent of it all. But if you made it through this far through the video, then holy shit you're invested in me then you really are and those of you who haven't i don't blame you either because who the hell wants to see anybody talking when you're so used to seeing action you're so used to seeing ghosts throwing shit around you're so used to seeing so many things happening and that's what a lot of you really want to see not just me yapping okay i'm done so comment below let me know how that works out um and check out that poll when it comes to that mysterious package that uh suspicious package i deleted all references to it i'm not putting it on youtube it's not a good idea i had a friend of mine suggested that, that i should not even consider sharing that i don't want to encourage anything like that so from this point i'm not even going to bring it up and i'm not even going to talk about it let's just move on it is what it is i i'd rather not get into details about the whole thing it's just like I said, some people just not making the best decisions and I can't even say anything really. I don't really want to draw attention to it. All I can say is uh, some idiot thought it was a good idea to pull a prank, some kind of immature thing, but I, that's, that's about it really. I'm not getting into any of that because like I said, I don't want to promote that kind of thing by sharing it because I don't want somebody to get ideas in their head and like, oh, let me do that and then I got to deal with that. I, hell no, because uh, what I want to do, have like 20 more security cameras out there? I don't need that. So I thought I would just share that with you. Plus I'm going to be moving out of here anyway. We're going to be... We're gonna be going further south, so someone's gonna take over this place, so. I thought I would put that out there if you're curious, like, what's going on? I thought you had that whole, like, you know, like, suspicious package thing. Well, you know, I, I can't, I can't bring it up. I can't even, it's it. Plus, I don't think YouTube really likes that kind of stuff on their platform, so it's best that just leave it alone. All right, that's it. Take care and be safe, everybody. All right, I have a New Year's resolution, and that is to stay as healthy as I can emotionally and physically. I, I did a lot of jogging right now. I feel all that fresh air just kicking in.